your favorite show that you tune into once a month. My name is Dan Verville. This is Derek Chalmers. Obviously, we work here at Princess Auto. This is Princess Auto See at Work, where you get to see the fabulous products that we have in store live in action. And today, as with every month, we have another great product to showcase. Uh, and today's all about fruit processing. That's right. So what is this? Mm. Well, this is <laughs> Let's this start is, off really sure. easy. This is simple. Well, this is a meat grinder. So this is a 0.4 horsepower, just about a half horsepower meat grinder, and uh, many attachments to go along with it. Um, easy to clean, stainless steel. Uh, we're going to be making some summer sausage patties and summer sausage. I am very hungry, so that is good. So food processing is something, I don't, are you seeing it more at a store level, more and more people getting involved in it? Yeah, we've got a, a larger line come in the last few years and it's become more popular and uh, it's very popular items. People are doing uh, wild game, they're making just uh, their own mixes at home, so yeah. How long have we been doing it at Princess Auto? I know you say we've, we've expanded our line, but we've always had a few yep. staples. We've always had there. grinders, we've always had slicers, scales, uh, packing equipment, vacuum bags, that kind of thing. Um, we've had that for 15 years or more. Okay. Yep. Well, if you're tuning in just now, you're watching See at Work. I'm Dan. This is Derek. You're going to see a fabulous Princess Auto product live in action today. As always, we encourage you to send in questions, any comments. I'll be monitoring live right here. And uh, we'll actually be giving one of these away today. Did you That's know right. that? We did, yeah. We're yeah. going to give one of these away. <laughs> We're going to give one of these away. Not this one. Brand new. But a brand new one. So ask a question and you could be taking home your very own meat grinder today. That's right. So that's very exciting. Are you going to take this one home with you after we're done? No. No, you won't. Okay. Well, that's great. You probably already have one at home. Let's get started. I want to see this thing work. Sure. Where do, we, where do we begin? Well, I mean, the first thing we can do, just to make it a little bit easier, we've got a, a foot pedal. So foot control to turn it off and on. Nice. So you can keep your hands clean. Uh, if you've got to do some attachments with the uh, sausage casings and whatnot, it just keeps your hands free from having to go to the switch all the time. Yeah. So and also, I mean, just to jump in there, yep. it's also kind of a safety thing too, right? It's it kind of nice too. to... Yep. Yep. Keep your hands free. You don't have to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, something happen when you're grinding and paying attention. We're just going to go in line with this. Okay. Into an extension cord. Put the pedal down the ground. Hope you guys can see this. It's very exciting. He's just plugging something in. Plugging something and make sure Done. the machine's off. And then we can <laughs> well activate with the foot pedal. There we go. Simple as that. Now we're missing something. We're missing some meat. <laughs> we are missing some, some meat. meat. <laughs> True. All right, so we're going to take some beef. What we're do we got? Cut that up. We've got some rib roast. Here we go. Do I get to do the honors you here? You do get to do the honors. Oh, yeah. no pressure at all. So some nice meat from Miller's Meats here in Winnipeg. Should I wear a glove right now? You could, yeah. You know, I think I might just because I'm going to touch my phone sure. after this. That's so right. let's... Yeah, and we're going to be mixing this with some pork. We have some pork already ground up. And uh, just to give it a little bit more flavor, it uh, doesn't really dry out that much uh, with the pork in it. And uh, we're going to be seasoning it after, after we get everything cut up and ground. Yeah. And we're going to grind everything twice. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a coarse plate that's in here. Um, it's an 8 millimeter plate. That's the diameter of the holes inside that plate. And we're going to go and move to a four millimeter plate afterwards. Okay. We're gonna just put this over here. And this, can you show the plate? Let's yeah, see the plate. we've got a four the millimeter there? plate. While I get this ready to go. That's a nice looking plate there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm noticing, you know, this, this meat is very cold. Is that? It is very cold, yeah. Is that what it should be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you don't want your meat refrigerated. Yeah. No, of course. Yep. No, it's going to be cold. Yep. Not frozen, nice temperature. That's right. Easy to cut. If it's a thinner cut of meat and you want to well. cut it up to, uh, to do some fine grinding, you could get it and cut it in slivers when it's just starting to thaw. Might be All a little right. bit easier. I but can't wait for people to comment on how bad I am at cutting, so looking forward to seeing those comments, everybody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How do we get going here? What well, do you, you're going to cut in strips. So the auger itself has a, um, a wider section of blade at the inside of the machine, right on top of the hopper. I'm going to pull the hopper up. Yeah, let's take a look yep. at that. And it, just the hole right in the middle there. Yep. It goes the down tube that goes into the auger drive. That actually will help. Long strips will help guide the, the meat into the auger and not uh, cubes and whatnot would tend to bunch up and get jammed in there. So it's going to be a little easier on the machine. So is this the right way? Probably not. Yep, cut it into a flat piece like that and then cut okay. it. And then cut again. Yep. Oh, that's really good for... What yeah. nice yep. we'll cut lengthways it. along that. Like that? Nope, the other way. The other way. Yep. Long strips. Long strips, yep. 
So at the store, are you see, like you said before, a lot of people with game, a lot of a lot That's of right. hunters. Yep. Is there just kind of the normal folks who are like, hey, I just want to make my own burgers? Yeah, I've talked to a few customers. They've come in. Now, where do these yep, go? Just drop just it in. Just throw them in. in. Yep, All drop right. them in. We'll get to grinding after you get some more cut. Uh, a lot of the customers that are coming in, uh, it's kind of a mix. So they're doing, uh, we're going for deer, moose, elk, whatever's uh, in the region. Um, the uh, few guys that I've spoken to that don't do any hunting, they're yep. just going to the store uh, and they're buying this kind of stuff. They're making their own sausages, patties, whatnot, so they can season it to the way they like it. Um, we have a range of mixes and seasonings at the store. Um, all the stores carry them. Casings for sausages, uh, patty mix, jerky mix, and we'll get into some of the jerky attachments a little bit later on. Yeah, everyone loves beef jerky. Yeah, absolutely. Not that they don't like hamburgers, but... So we probably should have cut this before. Like, how long is this going to take to cut? It'll take a while. We don't have to cut all of it. We'll cut a bunch because we're going to make uh, probably a couple patties, and we're going to try and get one one uh, summer sausage filled up there. Is there but, so is there a better kind of meat? Like, a, if you're making burgers, what do you want to use? Burgers, I mean, uh, kind of a rule of thumb for, for burgers, if you're going to be mixing them yourself, is try to get a 20 to 25% fat mix in it. Um, ground chuck, uh, if you can get a chuck roast uh, cut at the butcher shop, um, that's ideal. But everybody's got their own taste. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be something that's really specialized. I mean, if you've got a roast and you want to give it a shot, yeah. um, just keep in mind that, you know, your, again, your fat content in the roast is going to be important. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots of people who like to just experiment with just random mixes. Absolutely, yep, yeah, yeah. And you can do, you know, you could do turkey sausage, you can do a any type of meat that you can get. Poultry is fine. Okay. Yeah. How much more? You keep cutting keep going. and I'll start grinding. Okay, this yeah. is the, this is very exciting. Here. So we've got a meat lug here. We've got two different sizes at the store. This is a five inch. We've also got a seven inch. That's just a little bit taller. It'll hold more product. And uh, we have lids available for them. Uh, freezer safe, food safe, very popular items. So I'm gonna start grinding these guys. All right, just a reminder, you're watching See It Work. We're live and you're about to see a meat grinder That's work. Right. <laughs> so we've got the course plate in. We're gonna start with this, we'll get it running. Drop everything down. And again, we're gonna grind a coarse grind to start and a finer grind, especially for the sausage towards the end. So what's the, what's the name of the, t the, uh, the instrument you're holding in your hand right now? This is a, a, called a stomper and it's got a level here that will not allow it to go down into the auger, but if you're having a, a problem with the meat processing through the auger, you can give it a bit of an assistance there. So the size of this meat grinder, right. how, like, I mean, how does it rank compared to kind of something you'd see in a more commercial setting? Well, it, it's, it's one of the larger ones that we carry. Um, there are larger ones, obviously, for more commercial applications, but uh, if you're really serious about doing, you do a lot of game, uh, a lot of processing, you know, big family. Um, a lot of people are, you know, they'll do a side of a, a side of a, a deer or something like that and process it into jerky and, and different types of uh, ground applications. Yeah. Um, they're going to need something that's a little bit bigger scale. We've got a kind of a, uh, you know, lower end ones, smaller ones, uh, less expensive, but uh, they don't grind as efficiently. Um, if it's just small projects you're working on at home, then uh, by all means you can, um, you know, use something smaller. But uh, you know, as you uh, gain confidence and uh, do more product at your, uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. So you're you're finding this pretty easy using this two is, hands, eh? With <laughs> like you're so fast, that foot pedal is really yeah. helping. Sorry. Keep it's the not, momentum it's going. It's not helping it's me. It's really not fair. We should have sharpened the knife for you. I apologize. It's, you know about what? That. That's okay. That's all right. This is actually the knife that I made forging a few episodes is ago. It? Really? Yeah. That's very professional. <laughs> Spent some extra time in there. Yeah. No, but I, I really that foot pedal. If you're going to invest in one of these, like why not just Absolutely. invest in the I mean, foot pedal? I don't at the have to touch time. any of the any of the off on switch. It does have a cover on the off on switch, but I mean it's nice not to have to go and sanitize that. Keep everything to the stainless steel if you can, and that it's just easier for cleanup. Yeah. Yep. My cuts are getting very poor. That's okay. The grinder is going to take care of it. <laughs> Wow, I, I wish we had a grinder in other parts of life. <laughs> we'll just take care of it. It's fine. It's true. Yeah, it's going to make it all. Grinder. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah. All right. Well, at this point in time, I know you're cutting up, and by cutting up, I mean grinding. Right. Can we? Can we see? Let's. Let's see. Yeah. Here, I'll pull this. Let's up. see what we got in there. Nice. Yep. Yeah. And that's. It's pretty coarse. Um, but again, we're going to run it through. Uh, do a uh, a smaller uh, cut, and then we're also after that we're going to add in the pork. 
mix it together, and then we're going to take it and season it. Could you run it through more than twice if you really want it to go? You, you certainly could. Is that yep. going to? How does that affect the taste? Nothing at all. No, nope. it's just going to be a finer texture for uh, the. You know, in some cases, some people prefer a coarse cut in a sausage, for for instance. Yeah. For uh, patties and those kind of things, I would suggest maybe something a little finer. See, in my mind, I would think the finer you grind it, the better it tastes, but obviously that makes absolutely no sense at all. Everybody has preference. Yeah, there you go. Good. Done. Done. What do I win? Grinder. Win a grinder. Perfect. Yes. It's off the table. Just kidding. It's not. Right. Ask some questions. We're going to take a look and see what's going on. These gloves are done. That's great. Here we go. Oh, we got a lot of questions yeah, coming do in. that. I'll get this back in. All here right. So Kevin in Kipling Station, Saskatchewan wants to know, what is the horsepower of the grinder? I believe we said it's half a horse. It's a point, 0 0.4. So it's just under half a horsepower. 0 0.4. Yep. Josh in Prince Albert, Sask wants to know, how is it with, a, with meat with a lot of sinew? Uh, well, this had quite a bit of fat at the end it of it did. and it chewed it right up. So that uh, shouldn't be a problem. And again, you can, grind, you can grind a finer plate and that'll help with the sinew. Okay. Uh, ben from YouTube. I don't know where YouTube is, but it sounds like a great place to live. What is the duty cycle on the machine? Duty cycle on the machine? I don't know that, honestly. I'd have to double check okay, well, because we'll they do vary machine that. to machine. Okay, Mark and Missy, do you recommend that the meat be thawed? Uh, I believe the answer to that is yes. You don't want any frozen meat going Ideally, through Ideally, I mean, it's nice and cold. To cut it, if you want to get some thin slices to make it a little bit more, uh, you know, if it's, if it's a tougher cut of meat to make it a little bit more manageable for a smaller grinder, you could do that to make it easier to cut. But it all depends on, you know, if your knives are sharp and it's thawed 100%, it'll slice right through, so. Okay, and we have one. Let's do a couple more questions sure. here. We got enough. Uh, how much pressure does it take to push the, to, how much pressure does it take to press the power pedal and when it's pushed, is it variable speed or just on and off? It's on off, it's on um, off. but it's, there's very, it's a very light touch. Yeah. So it's very easy to control. And uh, right, right now, I, it's, I would put it like a sewing machine pedal. It's very light. Yeah, it yeah. is very light. And another question, and we're actually gonna answer this question later on. Uh, Daryl has asked, how easy, it to, uh, how easy is it to clean and can you put it in the dishwasher? Very easy to clean. The stainless steel components you could put in the dishwasher, um, but realistically, uh, a very warm, as warm as you can, or hot as you can, uh, you can get your hand into, and a mild dish detergent was really all you need. And that way you can go through, you can find out if there's a, a greasy feeling after that, you can put some baking soda in some warm water with some more soap, give it another rinse, um, and let it air dry, and it should be fine. And I, is it, I don't know if it's true or not, I think I read this, that you should put some food oil on yeah, to a few keep different, it from different rusting? Yeah, there's a few different things you can do. There's a silicone spray, it's a food grade silicone that's available. Um, you can use a food grade mineral oil as well. Um, it's just, just after everything's cleaned up to get everything lubricated. Um, there's different schools of thought on that. Um, what I've always been told and, and leaned towards would be to, if it's an O-ring, lubricate the O-ring, but all of the other equipment don't lubricate that necessarily. After it's clean, you can wrap it up in plastic, uh, put it away in the box if you have the box still, and then keep it for the next time, and then you could lubricate it just before, just to make sure everything's nice and, and fluid. Yeah, that's so it. I'm going to regrind this again. Okay. And I'm going to put on new gloves because I think I think we're going to mix some pork in shortly. Yeah, we're going to mix the pork in. We're going to get a meat mixing uh, tool up here. Okay. Yeah. So well, for those of you just tuning in, don't forget you are watching Princess Auto See at Work. My name's Dan. This is Derek. Today, we're looking at a meat grinder. Yeah. So this this is where the stopper kind of comes in handy. When we had the the strips cut, it wasn't too bad. But now that we're getting down to the uh, pre-ground. It's working a little harder to kind of feed into the auger system. So do we, we have not changed the plate yet, correct? We have not changed the plate. Okay. We're gonna to switch to the, the uh, smaller diameter plate when we get to mixing in the pork. Okay. Yep. Now, is there no, should I, I feel like we're doing log splitting here and I should move some of this away, should yeah, you I? Can, yeah, you certainly can. Okay. You can pull some of that down so it doesn't topple out. These are fresh gloves, by the way. And look, take a look, it's getting really a lot, lot finer now. Yeah, a lot finer. And this is only part two of three, so. Yeah, there's a little bit, it's a process, so I mean. Uh, Hence you know, the name food processing. Food processing. <laughs> so if you're going into, you know, doing something that, uh, especially on the sausage end, if it, if it wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't as important for uh, a leaner, smaller cut. Uh, a couple more questions here. Uh, Steven wants to know, can you grind small bones with the meat? Uh, if there was a small piece of bone or something cartilage, I'd try to get, out, get that out first, just so somebody doesn't uh, have a yeah. problem with it after they take a big bite, chip a tooth. Yeah, you don't want that. Do you want, want that? 
All right, so that's ground through. So we're gonna, okay. I'll switch to the smaller plate now. Sure, so, so that's quite simple. This. Yeah, we'll just wipe away the excess. We'll give this a spin. So how about, this comes with how many plates? This comes with, this machine comes with two plates. It comes with a, an eight and a four. And that's, again, that's the diameter of the plate. So I'll clean some of that out and I'll hold that up. There we go. So that's the four. Now here's, or that's the eight, sorry. This is the four. So you can see the difference in coarse and then fine. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that to the side. And it is, it does have a keyway on the bottom of the, uh, of the plate. And you can see the keyway up on the top. That actually faces down to the six o'clock position. Locks into place here. My hands are a little, <laughs> a little slippery. It just locks in just it like just that. Just like that. There like it a, is. Like a glove. And then we put the collar back on, the retaining ring. And we do it again. And we do it again. All right. Do we have any more questions? We, we've got a flood of questions coming in. Josh and PA would like to see the other attachments in use if we can. We'll get to that, Yeah, Josh. we're going to get to that Just with the sausage on. stuff. Food processing. And the patties. Some time. We do have a patty making attachment that's kind of neat that goes onto the grinder. Sorry if I came off threatening there, Josh. <laughs> Just, you know, it's very stressful here in the kitchen with Derek. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> we're here for he says day. no pressure, but he doesn't mean it. He runs a tight ship in here. So, okay, so no, that's kind of what you're used to seeing yeah. when you get ground beef at the store, right? Yeah. Yeah, that looks, uh, that's looking a little more like what you're used to seeing. Yep. Oh, we're going to slide See. some of this in. Some there we go. Yep. It's a lot finer. So is there, could you go finer than eight? Like how far well, do these the, attachments the four, go? The four is the finest plate Sorry. that we've got. The lower, yeah. yeah. Um, they're, I'm not sure what we've got that we stock that's finer, but there might be for some applications to get something that's very, 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 very fine mix. But this is ideal yeah. for what we're after. If you're just tuning in right now, I'm Dan. This is Derek. You're watching See at Work, where we show you some of the fantastic products that Princess Auto has in store. And today we're looking at a meat grinder. And this actual meat grinder, you can win this today. Not this one, but we'll give you a new one. All you have to do is ask a question, leave a comment, and you'll be entered to win. We're going to give it away at the end of the show uh, when we're done making our patties and our sausages. We got a loaded show today. As we keep going on here, I'll keep yep. a look back on my phone. We got a couple more questions. Oh, this is a good one. Mark and Missy wants to know, would you recommend using it for things other than meat, such as nuts or veggies? I suppose you could, yeah. Um, it's the, uh, the mix. If you're looking for something that is, um, it's going to be ground, right? It's going to be not so much chopped or diced. It's going to be ground up. So if you're looking to, you know, introduce that into uh, some kind of a, a recipe that you're doing, by all means. I yep. did, uh, I did read in some of our product knowledge materials that you can, I think, grind almonds and stuff to get towards a more of like you wanted to do a kind of a butter and almond butter right. or that kind yep. of stuff. I don't know how fine you would have to grind um, that of up. Of course, with, with a nut like that, right, it's going to have some oil in it, so, uh, and some, keep it uh, a little bit smoother, but at that point, you might have to mix it, right, yeah. to get it to, to peanut butter consistency or yeah. almond butter consistency. We are almost done the fine grind. So how about, that was, I think, seven pounds of meat that we just... That uh, was seven pounds seven of pounds rib of roast, yep. Okay. So how many burgers are we going to pump out with this thing? I'll probably make about maybe four or six patties and uh, we should have enough left over to uh, fill one sausage casing or almost okay. full. Okay, so that's slowing down a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the ground pork. Okay. And we're going to open that up. Please, thank you. And we're going to mix that. We're going to go that, put that through the finer cut because it's already been ground once. And then we're going to attach our meat mixer. We're going to mix the pork and the beef so together this is and already spice ground. it. I'm just throwing this in. Throw it in the top. Right at the top. There, there we go. go. Excellent. All right. Okay. This will move through pretty quick. So we're mixing two meats together. Yep. To get some. Yep. You could put. Uh, you know. You could do veal. Uh, any anything you can think of. The world is your oyster. <laughs> so exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. This. What's your go-to? I'd say pork and beef probably. Yeah. yeah I've done veal as well, but. 
What would be something that'd be really difficult? Have you, have you done anything where you're like that was a little much? Or? Um, not that I can think of. I haven't done a lot of it. I've kind of yeah. dipped my toe into it a little bit, but we're almost done. Yeah, I wonder how something like elk would be, or even if you'd want to do that. Probably. I guess not. it would also depend on the cut, yeah. right? It's like a cow. They're going to be uh, kind of a finer or a less tough cut, yeah. right? In some parts of the animal. Brian wants to know if we sell sausage skins. He has trouble finding casing for a small batch of sausages. We do sell. Well, Brian, we yeah, do, we yeah. do sell some casings. You can check that all the assortment out online. And we'll go through the assortment at the end of the show as well to show you what we have in stock. Okay, that's right. Here we go. Yep. This is a nice. Yeah, it's a nice mix. Lug of meat here. Yeah. So there's a there's a knife. I'll show you when we take the plate out and we're going to hook up the meat mixer. There's a knife in behind the, um, in behind the plate. When that sound, when we stop that sound, it's just dead quiet. It's kind of creepy. It's a little creepy. We got to keep this thing going. Almost Halloween. <laughs> this uh, isn't the Halloween episode, okay? This is That's not a special Halloween episode. episode. We're not, it's not Halloween yet. That's right. So we'll pull this guy out a little bit, pull the auger out. Okay. And in behind the plate, it rides flush against the plate. There's the knife. Very sharp, can be sharpened. You know, if you find that over overuse, it's dulling a bit, you can sharpen that. And it's important, so I can tell, you know, because this is the front, obviously, where the meat was coming out. This is the side where you're going to have some swirl marks from that knife. It's important to reuse the knife face and the swirl face against each other. So have them at the same position all the time. So we're just going to take the last little bit out here. Okay. Drop it down. We'll need the auger left in there because when we go to the uh, meat mixer, the meat mixer is actually going to be driven off of this machine. And we've got that just down below. So I'll move this out of the way. Yeah. Once again, if you are just tuning in, you are watching See at Work, the show where you get to see all of the fantastic products that Princess Auto has in action. Today we're doing the meat grinder. Right. I'm Dan. This is Derek. Leave a comment for your chance to win one of these. It's heavy. And by these, I mean the meat grinder, not what I'm pulling out here. Here we go. All right. Yeah. So what is this so this is a meat mixer now this can be used manually or it can be driven off of the grinder so we're going to be using it off the grinder today to show how easy it is to kind of set up and again if you're doing a large volume like this isn't much when you're doing a full animal um, you need to have you know something to assist in the mixing especially when you're mixing two together or doing the spice mix for your seasoning yeah. let's see we're just going to that is one of the benefits of this unit is that you can drive so much off of it yeah the um the uh nice thing is is if you run manual um if you're doing really really small batches um this can be left together and you could run you know a, a whole elk a whole cow whatever you're doing yeah. for and you're going to process even if you're just going to ground the meat leave it in the freezer and then do something with it after you can do that if you want to prep it first easy right yep. so we'll slide this off the top okay move that over here this thing's huge it's big <laughs> I'll just be here for the rest of the show. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Should we just <laughs> so a twist? Twist which way? That way. Nice. I'll let you I'll let you handle it. I know we got the leveling feet. We did yeah, level we this up before, before the sh before the show. There is a keyway on the top that it has to lock into. So I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. Our tables aren't exactly level here. Let's see if I can get this on for you. Can you lift that back in just yep. a little bit? Thank you. See, look, I'm just going to turn the pedal a little bit, see if we can align the gear up a bit. There we go. Lift up a little bit and we'll push it in. Push to me. There we go. There we go. We'll tighten it down. And it's a clockwise mix. There's an indicator on the side of the unit, but it's going to turn the same way that the, uh, that the grinder's turning. So what we're going to do now is we've got a seasoning pack here for summer sausage. Yeah, what sausage. do we got? Yep. For summer sausage. So they take the pack out. Is that, is this it? That is it. There we go. Yep. <laughs> so this will do, I believe, let's see, 20 pounds of meat. So we're only working with about uh, let's use the whole thing. 10. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a bit strong. <laughs> so we're going to cut that in half. Yeah. And you can put you know, your salt, your pepper, anything else that you want to do in there. And I'm going to pour this in. We'll get everything in. It's, it's pretty mixed already, but this is going to yeah. have everything just nice and consistent for us. Take a look if we have any more questions here as you get ready to, to add the seasoning. Uh, Sherman, would the motor get hot if you did half a deer in hamburger? 
Um, I mean, it might warm up, but it's not moving that fast. Um, you know, again, if the if the meat's pretty, pretty you know, thawed, it's not going to be an issue, I don't think. Um, I don't know if you'd be doing a half a deer at, at one full sitting. Um, you know, if you had a few minutes yeah. to rest in between, it's going to give it ample time to cool down. So, I'm gonna take a look in yeah, there. Take a peek in there. There we go. So I'm gonna fire everything up again here with the foot pedal, and we'll get everything turning. Dan, if you would open that oh. seasoning pouch up for us. I thought you'd never ask. Yeah. Here we go. And it is tilting, so we can lock the position to tilt the meat back into the lug after. Okay. What is this? Is a that's gonna be curing sausage cure. Yeah. yeah. So just yeah. dump half just in. Yeah. About half of that. Yeah. We'll let it run for a few minutes. We can go over some more questions and just to make sure it's mixed properly. I feel like that's about half. I'd say that's about right, yep. We're what a guess that was. A little bit of the cure, very so accurate. So what's, what's the cure, the cure is just salt? Is that basically yeah, just salt? Yeah, it's a salt mix. And you need to put that in. Yeah, sausage specifically, because we're making the patties as well. Yeah. It, you're making a sausage just in a patty form, so okay. we're gonna use that as well. Uh, a couple more questions. Wayne wants to know, is it a standard 110 volt receptacle or 220 volt? It's a standard 110. Standard 110, yep, Wayne. Standard household volt. Should get one of these right away. Um, Peter, can Canada goose be ground? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. You gotta pluck it first. <laughs> yes, please make sure you pluck it first. Yep. Please make sure. So what uh, the seasoning we've used today is our country style summer yep. sausage. I want to take a look at, uh, we can show that off as Derek uh, gets the cure in there. Okay, mix a little bit more. This we, we do carry in store. Does this grinder, ha this is Mark, sorry, lots of questions now. Does this grinder have a forward and reverse feature if it seems jammed up? No. That's what, the seasoning right no, there. No, what Delicious. you'd be doing is you'd be stopping, you'd be taking it apart. The, um, the auger itself pulls out quite easily. Uh, it's driven off of a large spline gear. So it pulls apart easily if there seems to be a jam. I think you really have to work to get this to jam though. Yeah. It's, it's pretty strong. Okay. Yeah. Um, Wayne wants to know, did we know the gear reduction internally? I.e. 20 to one, 40 to one? Off the top of my head, I do not. We'll, we'll see if we can answer that yep. for you. Josh wants to know how long can it run before it gets hot? Uh, it's, I, that would be yet. that would be more to the duty cycle end of it. Yeah. So that we'd have to kind of verify. And it, it all depends, right? If if you're doing something that is, you know, with breaks in between versus running straight through, I mean, that would be you know, it'd be more on a kind of a large scale production. So, mm -hmm. and someone had said they want to see inside the mixer again. I don't know if we can inside uh, the mixer. Can we do that? If we can do that again while we're mixing it you up, I can tilt that actually. I'll pull this lock out. Oh yeah, there we go. You want to see inside? This thing's kind of get. Next up. Yeah. So it's nice and mixed and it's very moist. If it seems that the, uh, the meat you're uh, using is a little bit dry, you can add a little bit of water when you're spicing. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you're just tuning in, you're watching See It Work. I'm Dan, this is Derek, where you get to, this, <laughs> this show is where you get to see all the fantastic products that Prince Lotto has to offer in action. You get to see them work. Today, you are seeing a meat grinder work. Mm -hmm. And what is this? What is this? The meat mixer. The meat mixer work. Meat mixer. And we're you're about to see a hamburger patty machine work. That's right, hamburger patty press. And we're going to do uh, sausage stuffing as well. So what I can do to, to make it easier to get all the meat out is I can pull this collar out on the side. It'll actually and take pull that the right mixing out. paddle out. Take off all that good stuff. Yep. And I'm going to put it back in the end get of the lug here. So do we, like, in terms of uh, safety-wise, I know you're not going to step on the pedal when you pull that out, but should you unplug it when you pull that you out? Unplug it. You can knock the switch off. Uh, unplug it. It just, you know, it's uh, one yeah. of those things where you'd be keep it away from, you know, if you're standing, say, at the end of the table and you're doing your mixing, and you're going to be going over there and, you know, putting your hands into yeah. it. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. Okay. I'm pull it out the back. I'll I'm going right through some gloves here. We'll get some more. We'll get that in. We'll put the. So while you're doing that, do you want me to get the uh, back on? the burger press? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, grab the burger sure, press. Sure, we'll we grab the burger press. Down. Now this thing is pretty cool. Not that this all isn't cool, but this is uh, shows you where I am in the process. That's I really just want to make burgers. <laughs> I, I don't recall Grinding seeing screen. that before this season. I don't know if we had it last year, but uh, it's super fast. Like I'm, I'm worried we're not gonna be able to keep up with this thing. We'll be eating well but we'll try in short order. So how are we going to clean this out? Well, this will clean that. We're going to put aside. We're going to clean that out when we clean all the other equipment. Okay. So I'll pull that back up. I'll move this out of the way. Place. 
There is, you do need a lot of space when you're doing this, as yep. I've kind of discovered. I, did, I had no idea that you needed this much room. And we do have our stainless steel tables, so they're food grade stainless, which is important, um, you know, if we're, you know, uh, kind of uh, keeping everything clean and easy to clean. Yeah. Um, wood is porous, of course, um, unless there's some kind of a sealed top on it or something like that. It's probably a good idea to try and stick with stainless steel if you can. And this is actually two of the tables that we carry in storage right. just put together. It's yeah, and we have a model. longer we have a longer version that we carry as well. Give it just a little bit of a tug. We go back and forth. It's a very close fit, and the nice thing about that is, you is you don't want anything squeezing out when you're doing your grinding, right? So Okay, next attachment to the transformer here. There is a keyway, just as the meat grinder or the meat to mixer has, there's a keyway on the top. So that keyway is going to ind index itself on the top of the grinder here. And then as far as it goes down in, we're going to lock the handle on the side. Okay, we're going to put the hopper back on the top. Yeah, okay. a few people are asking right now just how, how easy is it to clean, and we will get to that. We want to make sure we show you the full range of assortment and accessories that you can use with them. Um, we'll show you how to clean it yep. at the end here. So the collar, we're going to use this so collar, yeah, we so we're going to have attachment. to take this apart. Just on the bottom here, there's a thumb screw. Very quick and easy to take apart for cleaning and assembly. We're going to put that in here, and we're going to lock that in on the top. I think we need to open a burger joint after this. Sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs> We've got nothing else to do. Nothing like, else really. to do. No, nope, not at all. So I'm going to make sure, because there is a slot on the bottom that's going to index itself in there as well, I'm going to keep that down to the bottom. Okay. So that way we can see through the plexiglass plate on the top how the burger patty is forming up there. And it should work fine without the stuffing plate. So we're going to give it a go with that. And if it needs a stuffing plate, if it's a little bit too, it if it's a little bit too moist, doesn't want to drive in there. I'm going to just tighten this a little bit more. Okay. Now, do I have to be ready to, to catch these things? Yeah, so what I was just going to mention that. What <laughs> we're going to do is we're going to grab, we've got a package of our patty wax paper. So it's pre-cut pieces. They're just down uh, there. Yeah, there you go. And that way when they come out, you can put it down on the wax paper. You can stack them up for, uh, for freezing. It's going to work really, really slick. There's our patty wax paper. All right. Yeah. Awkwardly hold so get a few of those ready. Pieces, pieces behind. Okay. Some more of the mix. Does it? Where is it going? It's going to slide out the bottom. Yeah. Well, it's going to come. It's going to go. There's. A, it's two sides. So okay. once we do one, we're going to pull through, like this, uh -huh. and it's conical shaped around the outside edge. So it's going to assist in dropping down. We don't have to go in there and monkey around Poke with around. it. Okay. Maybe a light tap just to get it going. And oh, then sure. you can fill that side, and then you just go side to side to side to side. Okay. Right? Let's give it a shot. So we'll do that one. Work on this side to start. We'll pack everything down. Here in we there. go. Leave some aside for the sausage. We'll You're just tuning in. You are watching See It Work. I'm Dan. This is Derek. You're seeing some great Princess Auto products in action. And right now we're about to make some hamburgers. Yeah, we're going to mix this through. We'll push it through again. Oh, oh. is it not tight? It is blowing it right off. That's all right. Let's just make sure it's tight. Oh, Thanks yeah, there screen. it is. There we go. Okay. All right, ready? There we go. Let's push that in. There we go. Yep. Get some of that down there. That and is fill cool. It, fill it right to make a nice round burger. All right, we're going to stop and we're going to pull towards. Right, there you go. Oh, done. Perfectly formed patty. Perfect. Yep, nice mix. <laughs> I was actually very excited when that happened. <laughs> All right, so we'll fill her up again. Do another patty. It'll Keep come it up, going. We only got 40 more to make. This is good the other stuff. Side. It'll come out the other side there okay. when we get ready. Yeah, if you're making burgers, this well, is they're the nice way and to go. uniform, right? So they'll even portion. Okay, we'll slide it through the other way. There. And Perfect. we're good. Yeah. So we'll make a couple more of these. Sure. Okay. I'll to quickly take a peek. We got a. Yeah, see if there's any more questions. Uh, Wayne wants to know is this grinder exclusive to Princess Auto? Uh, no, but uh, we do have a lot of the products from the Valley Sportsman brand, and uh, it is uh, probably one of the best values out there buying through us. Mm -hmm. 
Stu wants to know, can you buy replacement blades? I'm yes. assuming he means those yep, little Yeah, you can guys. buy the blades and the um, and the separator discs there with the different yeah. different sizing. You can certainly buy those. We have all the way from a 10 millimeter down to the four and a half. Okay, so we'll do one more. There we go. I wish yeah, we had the Blackstone that. grill fired up. I was just here. thinking that a few <laughs> minutes ago. This would have been ideal. Yeah. That would okay. have been the longest See at Work episode <laughs> of all have. time. It's a four hour show. We make burgers, eat them, and just hang out. Then we ride the mini bikes later. It's a little inside trivia for those of you who've yeah, been following the show. Very slippery trivia. We know there's at block. least 400 of you. Okay. Oh, this is great. I'm after this guy. I'm. I think it's sausage time, hey? Yep, we're going to switch over to the sausage stuffer. Perfect, look at that. Boom, nicely done. Look All right. That. Perfect, every time. Okay, so every that's time. That's what you get in our kitchen here. Oops. Set that aside. All right. So Wayne not. wants to know, would this be able to grind organ meat to make liver pate? Certainly. see why not. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kevin asked why the patty maker wasn't staying attached on its own. I think it was just... I am covered in, <laughs> covered in grease <laughs> and ankle. fat. It is very hard to get that thumb screw tight. Yeah. So I could say, take the gloves off, give it a tighten, and uh, we're going to pull this back out and we're going to throw it back on the top here. I don't want to waste anything if we can help it. All right, don't forget, if you are watching, uh, please be sure to add a comment, ask a question, and you could win one of these your very own meat grinder right. at the end of the episode. So next okay. up, we're going to make a sausage. Yeah, we're going to do sausage. The casing, if you wouldn't mind grabbing yeah, the we'll grab uh, whatever tubes. We need here. These guys? That's the casing. Nope, and oh. the tubes here. Oh, oh. yeah. guys, yeah. Here we go. Yep. So we're going to use the largest tube. It's a little small for the casing that we're doing. I'm going to move this out of the way. But it's going to give us the biggest volume. So when we go to do the sausage, we don't need a knife but we do need the stuffing plate and there's two different types. We've got this one that has three holes in it and we've got one that has two holes and they're just two large holes opposite each other. And that's gonna help fill that casing up nice and even. So we're gonna get that indexed in just like that. We're gonna put this guy in, these guys thread together. Ideally, uh, it's been suggested to hand wash these plastic guys versus putting them in the dishwasher. Yeah. Uh, and it's more aesthetics, it's more to keep them from staining. It's not gonna you know, change the way they work. So we'll do this guy here and get this in nice and tight. All right. All right. If you're just okay. tuning in, you're watching See It Work. I'm Dan. This is Derek. You are seeing some of Princess Auto's awesome products live in action. You're seeing them work. Today, you are seeing a meat grinder. Okay. And we've already made hamburgers. Now we're going to make That's some right. sausage. Now, do you have that casing for the sausage? And the casing yep. okay. is right here. You know what? I should probably... We sell all this stuff in store. Yeah, we certainly do. Probably show... Here's a sausage making kit. This is the right one, I believe. Yep, that's right. That's for summer sausage. We brought the summer sausage selection in. Okay. So this is to hang, right? Obviously to cure the, uh, cure the sausage. So we're gonna get this going again. Try Feel and keep like as much pressure as we can on it. We're in that episode of Seinfeld where Jerry, or Kramer and Newman are just making sausages. It'll keep you busy. <laughs> You might need to help me once it starts to yeah. fill up the casing there. So I'm going to get this pushed in. So now this casing is edible? It, if you did eat if it? If you did, yeah. It's, it's food safe. It's, uh, it's kind of the same thing you'd see in a deli counter, right? It's that kind of a yeah. salami type casing that you have on there, or a sausage type casing. Stop there. I'll try and get a little tighter okay. pack in the back there. Yeah, once it's finely ground, this is very, very easy to slide through here. Yeah, yeah hold that. Yeah, yeah please support that. Yeah, for okay. sure. Because the summer sausage like, would look like a salami. Right? Yeah. So everybody knows yeah. it's not going to be something we're going to take and we're going to uh, spin it around and make links. We're going to make just a large. How hard is that to do? Have you done that? I have. It's <laughs> not hard. It's just the, it's a smaller casing. Yeah. Um, you can use a collagen casing, and some people prefer to use a natural casing, but. Uh, it's, it's just about getting the right size tube for the casing, right? Yeah. It makes it very easy. Yeah, that sounds yeah. like an art form. Yep. Make sure it's packed a little bit and pull it down just a bit. 
And how are so you? So you're just controlling the amount yep, of meat coming I'm, in I'm just, just based at the on end, pressure? I'm just at the end of the nozzle. I'm trying to watch the casing so it doesn't get overfilled, but I don't want to have any air gaps, right? So I'm no. going to push it down a little bit, and I'm going to try and make it as tight as I can with my hand. And then when the pressure builds up, I'm going to slowly let that off. Yeah. Make sure there's more meat down there to try and keep, like I say, any air bubbles out. As we move it down, and we can fill up, work against there. We'll do one that's... This is a lot of meat. It's a lot. Like this, yeah, this but is I mean, a pig. You can slice this up and you can... <laughs> it's not a pig. So you can slice it up, make sandwiches, yeah. you can fry it, have breakfast. Let's go ahead. And it's a nice activity for the family. Absolutely. Right? Right? Wanna, yeah, fall time comes and... Yeah. Right? Everybody's harvesting. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to take a look at my phone while I'm holding this for you. Good. Because this, uh, this is a balancing act. Uh, Mike wants to know what size burgers does the attachment make? I think those were... I'd say probably about a five inch patty. They're, they're a third, uh, yeah, five inch patty. We'll go with that. We'll get, we'll get you that answer. We'll get you that answer before I guess. Um, can you buy an attachment to make smaller patties? I don't That's the only so. one I size that we have. that's the only one yep. we got. And Kevin wants to know what the attachment is for making jerky. Jerky, we, we'll get to that we'll in get a few to minutes. That. We, we won't be showing you why. We won't actually be making, we, but we have the uh, product behind us. We can go through that. Because if we did show you all the attachments in action, we would just have a dedicated 24-hour channel. That's right. <laughs> to food processing. Okay. Yep, we're almost done here. We are almost done. Almost done. Derek really wants to finish this sausage off. Get it's a consummate down. professional. He wants to make sure this thing is, is ready to go. We will include this with uh, the meat grinder for the winter. Just joking. Just we joking. Won't. We will not. We will that. not. I don't think this thing will. I don't think Canada Post will allow it. <laughs> what, what's right. in there? I don't know. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take that off. Okay. We'll tie it. I'm sweating. I didn't do anything. Really? I was just holding that. The lights are off. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. So we'll tie there that we off. You could put a hog ring on that. Uh, hog ring pliers can be used for upholstery, but they can also be used, if you've ever seen on the end of a salami, a little metal ring, that's yeah. called a hog ring. Yeah. We have hog ring pliers in stock with the, with the rings itself. Uh, you can clip both ends with them and that just keeps everything nice and tight. We'll tie this off after. We won't get into that right now. No, Put so right now, if we want to, you know, we know we got a lot on the product line yep. side. Um, do we, let's, let's go for a walk through the product line. Sure, Why don't we absolutely. take a look at yep. that? We can come over here and take a look. All right, so we've got the burger press attachment, and that's what we used uh, to make the, uh, the mixed patties. Um, there's different sizes of chutes, obviously, for different uh, mixes that you're going to use. Uh, very easy to clean. Everything is, is easy to blow apart. Uh, plastic, um, like I say, soap and water, warm soap and water. Um, if you're going to be putting them, stacking them up like you see here and saving them for after or any kind of food that you're looking at processing and keeping, whether it's vegetable, fish, like we show on the front of the box here, we've got a couple different options in vacuum sealers. We have bags and rolls. We have pre-cut bags for certain sizes. Um, very, very popular. Um, in most cases, uh, you could use this for meal prep. Uh, if you're doing a lot of harvesting of uh, vegetables from the uh, fall season to get the garden cleaned out, very, very handy. Um, if you're doing something where you're processing, uh, say, some fish and you want to do it in individual sizes and you're going to have a pound of each, let's say, you can go to one of the digital scales that we have, uh, stainless steel again, so very food safe, um, very easy to use. You can go into uh, pounds, you can go into uh, kilograms, uh, you can do up to 660 pounds, so you could That's use this big. for, absolutely, yeah. you could use this for anything, really. Um, if you're going to be using it for something else, you could wrap it with some saran, and then just give it a quick clean after and you can go right back into food. So processing. don't use the one from, the, from your bathroom at home. Is I would saying. suggest not. Okay, good. Probably not. <laughs> um, and like when we get to our jerky attachment um, or with fish or fruit or whatnot, you could also go to one of the dehydrators that we carry. Um, different racks for different types. If you want to have apples and uh, uh, do pineapple below it or you, know, you want to make some jerky and dehydrate that. Uh, very easy to use. Um, I know at our, uh, our house, the apple chips from the crab apple trees are super popular. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we go over here to the sausage stuffer, that's manual. Um, the same version that we had with the uh, mixing machine, it's just going to be a hand crank. And there's different sizes of tubes for the different casings. So you've got uh, everything from a very small, almost like a pepperoni or a pepperette, uh, all the way up to uh, large link sausages like a smoky. And here's the uh, foot pedal that we have we're using today. That's the key. That is very important. It's super handy. 
Um, the tenderizing and jerky attachment that we've got there, that's, it speaks for itself. I mean, it's going to go mount on the end of the grinder just like we did with the meat mixer, and it's going to get everything nice and coarse, uh, kind of a, a rough cut, length cut. Um, then you can tenderize and marinate the meat and uh, lay it out in the dehydrator to make the jerky. Uh, just below that, we've got the food slicer, and we've got different versions of slicers, kind of a good, better, best, if you will. Uh, if you're doing, you know, you're buying some uh, lunch meat or some roasts and you want to slice them up yourself, uh, you want to try and get something really nice and thin for different recipes you're using. Or if you're doing something in, you know, uh, wild game, you're doing a whole, whole elk or a moose or a deer uh, or a bunch of animals, the commercial grade one is a, a nice option to go to. That's high end. Yeah. That is a high-end commercial food slicer. It is. It <laughs> if you have is. that in your house, it's very. You better be a fan of deli meat if you've got this big. in your you house. You love sandwiches. You better be producing some food. All right, well, I have the winner, but I'm going to share that in just a moment. We had a lot of questions come up about how to clean it, uh, so we're going to quickly let's let's dive into kind of how we're going to we take it apart. Yep. We won't have time to necessarily clean it, but we can explain how yep. and show you how it kind of all comes together or yep. it comes apart. I guess absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So we'll just move the lug back in under here because we're going to try and keep this. We can get back to using this here. So for cleaning, it's the same thing. It's just the same as putting it together, just taking it apart. And so to clean this, you would just want to use just soapy water. Warm soap and water. Yeah. If you find that there's a, a film, a greasy film on the, uh, the, the product after, you could take some baking soda and some warm water. And then again, just do mild detergent and warm water. As hot as you can comfortably put your hands in would be ideal. Um, and then just allow everything to air dry. Yeah. Um, if there's debris in it, what we can do too is really quick, I can spin this back on. A little trick uh, to get the meat out, you might have to do a little bit more than what we've got here, but you can run bread through the grinder and that's going to help clean the excess yeah, meat. Yeah, sure, we've got some bread yep, here. I we've think got we some, can quickly uh, show you this trick. We've got some ends of the bread. And again, if you had to buy a just a little loaf of bread to kind of throw through here if you're doing a lot right at the very end of the process. Get this here. Let's tear up some small Someone chunks. Someone asked a question here. Stu asked, can we, can we grind bones in here if you were making dog food for your dog? If, if it, it was a, probably if it was a softer bone, let's yeah. say you're doing chicken or something like that. If it was a softer bone than like cartilage, it would absolutely uh, grind it up, right? Yeah. So you'd want to go obviously coarse and then you could try and do it finer, but I would leave it as coarse as possible just to stop it from yeah. having any kind of binding issue against the plate, right? Okay. okay. So we've got some in there. Get so the this is the trick, back. hey? Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, that's... Yeah, and that'll push that out. Say so we're gonna run out of That's bread crazy before how this comes was through. In there. There's a lot. Like, there's a lot. Yeah. Where'd and I that mean, come from? you know, if you're gonna be doing something that's packing the bread in, yeah. right? So that was about four or five pieces of bread. Wow. Yeah, and you can see, I mean, we've we've got a lot of bread left in there, but there's still yeah. some meat. So that's gonna take the onus off of having to get in there and scrub. Uh, there are a selection of brushes that we carry for cleaning. We've got one down here. Basically, looks like a large bottle brush. Yeah. That would be good for going down into the tubes in through the channel, the auger channel. Um, there's smaller ones that we carry as well to go in to actually clean the individual plates, the holes in the plates. Um, it's as anything else, right? You wanna be as safe as possible and try and keep everything as clean as possible. All right, well, it's time. It's that time of the show. Everyone's favorite time of the show. Let's find out who won this thing. Who won the meat grinder today? Congratulations to Anna Carr from Winnipeg. Congratulations, Congratulations. Anna. You just won this and this meat. <laughs> We're and gonna sign really. that. Well, yeah, we'll sign. Derek will sign this for you. Permanent no, sharpie, silver sharpie. So yep. you can always remember how you won this signature thing. model. <laughs> yeah, say the signature model. Well, that's crazy. Not, that's a crazy idea, but I like it. Um, that'll do it for us today on See at Work. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Dan. This is Derek. And uh, be sure to head down to Princess Auto. Uh, take a look. Food processing is something you want to get into. Our team members can help you out. Um, and we'll see you next month for our next exciting product on See at Work. God. Oh, that was great. God.